let's start the class then so uh, before we uh, try learning anything new tell me if you guys have any doubt with respect to what we learned in the last class anything that is sounding confusing not clear needs to be explained again no anybody on the screen Rukpik, Vaibhav, Srivatsav, Dhanushri, Isha and Athar. Anything from the last class that is not clear to you guys? Yeah. Everything clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Then, let's start with what we want to learn today. Everybody clear, okay? Uh, are you getting some, some cold things from there? Okay. All right. So let me do one thing. Let me put a table here, and this is what we had started with. The sine, cos, and tan. Zero degree, thirty degree. Forty-five degree, sixty degree, and ninety degree. What we are trying to do is we are trying to find out the value for sine zero degree, sine thirty degree, sine forty-five degree, sine sixty degree, ninety degree. Similarly for cos, similarly for tan. So if you guys recall, we found out that in the last class we found that sine zero is how much? Sine zero degree is how much? Zero. It's a zero. And that is equivalent to cos of the complementary angle, right? So sine. So if you guys remember from the last class that that we were doing was sine of theta is equal to cos of 90 degree minus theta. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. If you don't, watch the video from the previous class. Okay. So here, if sine theta, if sine zero is zero, sine of zero degree will be equal to cos of ninety degree minus zero. So that will be equal to cos of ninety degree. So if sine zero is zero, cos of ninety will be zero. Okay, this part we have seen in the previous class. Everybody has to say only yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Oh. yes sir. Yeah. I'm not forcing you. I'm. I'm making you guys believe what we have learned in the previous class. Okay. And if there is any doubt, obviously we can come back to the things. But uh, an easier option would be just go through it one more time in case you know you are not able to recollect. Okay. Now, next thing that we did was sine of 90 degree was how much? One. So, if sine of 90 is is one, then cos of zero will be equal to one. It's always like whatever is the value for sine sine theta, subtract that theta from 90, and that will be equivalent of cos value. Okay. So, if sine of 90 is one, cos of zero will be one. Sorry. Cos of zero degree will be one. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. Other thing that we saw or learned was tan theta will be equal to sin theta by cos theta. Do you guys remember or you don't? You remember? Yes, sir. So we are trying to fill this table with whatever we have learned in a not to memorize. To relate with the concepts that we have been learning so far. Okay? So, tan theta. So tan zero degree will be equal to sine zero by cos zero. So, cos zero, sine zero by cos zero will be tan zero. Okay. Sine zero by cos zero. One by zero by one. How much? Zero. Tan of ninety degree will be how much? Sine by cos. One by zero. 
Yeah? So far, it's okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And why I have put these angles only, right? 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. They are the most commonly used angles that you'll be dealing with. And eventually, you will end up memorizing these numbers with a lot of practice, not by memorizing this table, okay? Right now, we're just trying to prove the value. And the only two things that you need to remember based on what we have learned is this. Sin theta is equal to cos of 90 degree minus theta or vice versa, okay? Tan theta will be equal to sin theta by cos theta. If you remember this much, not because I'm, I'm asking you guys to remember, but because we have seen how it, it works, right? If you remember this, you'll be able to fill this table. Now let's look at some interesting concepts. Are we, are we good to move on or, or anything that is not clear yet? It's clear, sir. Everybody? Rutsvi? Mm -hmm. Clear for you? Danushri? Isha, Thar, everybody? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, can somebody tell me how much is sine 30 degree? What is the value of sine 30 degree? Sir, it's 60. Uh, what is that? It's a 60, sir. No. 60 degree. No, it will be sine of 30 degree will be equal to cos of 60 degree. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I am saying what is the absolute value? Like we found sine zero is zero, sine ninety is one. Can somebody tell me what is the value of sine thirty degree? Uh, you are free to Google. Okay. If you want, you can Google. Okay. I will tell you this is one by two. Sine thirty degree is equal to one by two. If you do Google. Google will say the same thing. But my inherent behavior is I don't trust anybody. Meaning, sin 30 degrees 1 by 2. What? Why? How? That is what we are here for. So, let's try finding it out. We'll find it and we'll prove it. So that you are not forced to trust me what I'm saying. Now let's look at one triangle called equilateral triangle. And and you will see all the concepts that we have learned so far, I will be using a lot of them, okay? So it's an equilateral triangle, meaning let's say this is A, B, C is an equilateral triangle. Okay? So if this is let's say five cent six centimeters, this is also six centimeters, this is also six centimeters. So far okay? No problem? Everybody with me? I have just taken a very lame approach. I have drawn a equilateral triangle here on the board. Okay? And my intention is to find out the value of sine 30 degree. And you guys can, are open to laugh at me saying you told you only told me that all the trigonometry concepts relate to only one type of triangle called right angle triangle or right triangle. Why are you drawing an equilateral triangle and trying to prove the value of sin 30 degree? Hold, the, hold your horses for two moments. Now, I am drawing a perpendicular line from here to here. From this vertex, I am drawing a perpendicular line here. Now, and this is hitting here on the point D. So, in our attempt to find out the value of sin 30 degree, I have drawn an equilateral triangle and from this vertex I have drawn a perpendicular line on this one. I said this side is 6 cm and that was just an extra information. You don't really have to worry about it. If it's an equilateral triangle, it could be 6 cm each, it could be 5 cm each, it could be 25 cm each, depending on what you want to choose. Everybody with me so far, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so this is an equilateral triangle. The only definition we know about equilateral triangle is it's a triangle with all sides being equal and all angles are 60 degrees. 
Everybody free? Yes. Out. Now, what did I do? I have drawn a perpendicular line from this vertex to this opposite side. So it, it, it has met this line at point D. Point D. Not line, line segment. This side at point D. So now I have got two triangles. This one and this one. Yeah? What I am saying is, this triangle and this triangle are congruent. Do you guys believe me? Yeah? Because this side, between the, both the triangles, this side is common. This side and this side are same. It's an equilateral triangle. So, this triangle and this triangle both are congruent because one side is common, meaning same. These two sides are also same length, so they are also same. And this angle is 60 degree because it's an equilateral triangle, so all angles will be 60 degree each. So, this is 60 degree, this is 60 degree. So, you got two sides, this side, this side, this side, this side, both are same. This angle, this angle are matching. This angle and this angle are also matching. So, now you've got Two sides and two angles matching, so third angle is anyway going to match. Yeah? With all the permutations and combination that you see on the board, you can be assured that this is a, these two triangles are congruent using S A S. Two sides and angles. So this side, this side same, this side, both are same. Okay? And this angle, this angle are same. Because the other two angles at the triangle are matching, so third angle has to match, no choice. Yeah? Yes, sir. Everybody has to do that ritual of saying yes. If you don't say so, I would not be convinced that I am able to explain. Everybody, Ruthvik, Dhanushri, Isha, Athar, Jivatsam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, again, I am doing a recap. I have drawn an equilateral triangle. And from this vertex, I have drawn a perpendicular on this line segment, this side, which is meeting at point B. And eventually, that is splitting between the two triangles. And I am saying both the triangles are congruent because this side, these two sides are same. This side is common. This angle and this angle are same because it was earlier equilateral triangle, so all angles were, all angles were 60 degrees. So these two angles are matching and these two angles are 90 degrees each because they are drawn a perpendicular. So two angles are matching, so third angle has to match and also two sides are matched. So basically three angles are matching, two sides are matching. No other choice. But now these two triangles are congruent. What does that mean? If the two triangles are congruent, this, this side, this side are same. And let's say the side of the original uh, triangle, the equilateral triangle was let's say 8 cm each. Then this is 4, this is also 4. Are you guys with me so far? Yes sir. Yes sir. This is also 8. This is also 8. Because my, my original triangle was an equilateral triangle, so all the three sides were same length. We have just drawn a perpendicular to split this into two triangles and we found that both the triangles are congruent. That means this side and this side are same and both are half of the side of the equilateral triangle. Up to that much clear? Yes, sir. Everybody clear? Including myself? Yes, sir. Athar, Isha, Dhanushri, Ruthvik, all the silent shades. I will force you guys to speak up. Unless I hear a yes, I would not be confident. Yeah? Okay. Now, so from this, whatever we have done so far, we found that this is 4 cm and this is 8 cm. I mean, I just give an example. Whatever is the side, length of the side of the equilateral triangle, this perpendicular has split that to two equal parts. That, to that much is clear, right? Now, look at this. This is 60 degree because my original angle was, our original triangle was, let me draw, this thing clearly here, okay? This was my original triangle. All the angles were 60 degrees. It was my equilateral triangle. 
and I have drawn a perpendicular which is meeting here at D. It was A B C. So this is 60, this is 60, and this is 60. Now we found that both the triangles are congruent by drawing the perpendicular line. So this this side is half of the original side. Okay. This is 60. This is 60. Now you find that this angle is 30 degree and this angle is 30 degree. Do you guys agree or you don't? Yeah. So it's 60, 90. If I am looking at only this triangle, this is 60, this is 90, 150 plus 30. Similarly here, this is 90, this is 60, in this triangle is also 30. That part is clear, right? Now I we got 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. These are the angles. Now let's look at this triangle. Okay. And now let's put our numbers. So let's say the length of my equilateral triangle was let's say 6 cm each for each side. Okay. I'm just making it up. It could be 10, it could be 20, it could be 100 also. So each side is 6 cm because it's an equilateral triangle. Now let's find out sine of 30 degrees in this triangle. Sine of 30 degrees, this is my theta. What is the sign, value of sine? The side opposite to this divided by hypotenuse. So side upper to this is what? If this is 6, this will be 3 cm. Are you guys with me or not? Yeah? Sir. So I am saying in this equilateral triangle, this is a perpendicular. We have thought 3 these two are congruent. And this part is half of the whole side. That part is clear, right? Now I am saying. This, this angle is 30 degrees, so let's find out the value of sine 30 degrees. We know sine of any angle is, sine of any angle is the side opposite to that angle divided by hypotenuse. Cos of any angle is the base divided by hypotenuse. Tan of any angle is this divided by this, meaning side, opposite side divided by the base. Yeah, that, that's the basic understanding, right? Now sine of 30 degrees will be this side, 3 divided by the hypotenuse 6. So 3 cm by 6 cm. What did it become? 1 by 2. This is what we started with. The sine of 30 degrees 1 by 2. What did we do? We said okay fine. To prove that we just took an example of our equilateral triangle. We have drawn a perpendicular from the vertex on the opposite side. That split into two, two congruent triangles and then that gave me the angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so this, this was 60, 60, 60, this became half of it. So this became 30 degree and the side became half of the, the, the side of the equilateral triangle. So now I am trying to find out sine of 30 degree. So sine of 30 degree is sine opposite to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. Side opposite to this angle is half of the side, which is 3 cm. And the hypotenuse is 6 cm. That gave me sine of 30 degree equal to 1 by 2. Am I making sense so far? Yes, sir. Are you guys convinced that sine 30 degrees is 1 by 2? Not because I am saying so? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, the so sine of 30 degrees is 1 by 2. Let's fill this table. Okay? Now, what will be cos of 60 degrees? Again, same thing. 1 by half. So whatever is your sine of 30, that will be cos of 90 minus 30. So cos of 90 minus 30 is cos 60, is 1 by 2. This much is clear, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now let's do one more thing. In this same triangle, whatever we have done, let's try reusing it. Okay? So now, there are certain things that we have already understood. This was my equilateral triangle, this was 60 degree, this was 60 degree, this was 60 degree and we, then we have drawn a perpendicular, this is B. Let's say this side was X, that's better right? If I say 6 or 8, that might make it confusing. This side is X. Now, here to here is how much? X by 2. Yeah. What we don't know is this one. 
from here to here a b c and this is d what we don't know is the height of this perpendicular line a b let's try finding it out and that is where our knowledge of pythagoras theorem helps so now let's look at this triangle alone which is half of this one a b c this is 90 degree this is 60 degree and this is 30 degree we know if this is x this is x by 2 yeah the screen got locked so i'm just trying to unlock your screen okay everybody can hear me okay right yes oh so now we know this side was let's say the equilateral in the original equilateral triangle the side was x and this by drawing the perpendicular it became x by 2 half of that so what we don't know is this one okay Now the Pythagoras theorem says a square plus b square equal to c square, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are two sides, making the 90 degree angle. Now here, what we don't know is this one. Let's call this guy y. Okay. So as per the Pythagoras theorem, it says y square plus a square plus b square means x by two square equal to c square, which is x square. Up to this much, okay. Everybody is with me so far. Yes, sir. Hmm? And and see if 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 I try explaining something the way I understand and I'm rushing through it, it's perfectly fine. If you ask me the same question five times, okay, it's perfectly okay. I'm not teaching here for myself. I'm teaching for you guys, okay. If anybody in the class has slightest of the doubt, please don't hesitate to ask, okay. Now this much is okay, right? So I'm just deleting this part of the triangle so that we have some space on the board. So what we don't know is this side, okay? Why? So from we use the Pythagoras theorem to find to relate this, this whole thing. So why we don't know what is why and why? So y square a square plus b square is this equal to c square. Now let's. Solve this equation. Y square plus x by two whole square. That means that makes it x square by four equal to x square. So y square equal to equal x square. This whole thing I'm moving to other side so that I have y only on one side. So it becomes x square minus x square by four. Are you guys with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So here, that means y square equals. Let's solve it like a normal, you know, uh, fraction relation. So this becomes four in my LCM. It becomes four x square minus x square. Yeah. This makes it three x square, four x square minus x square, three x square divided by four. Yeah. Or Up to this, this much is fine, right? This flow is okay. Yes, sir. You are you guys are able to follow my story, right? Yes, sir. We just took half of that equilateral triangle, or whatever we knew, we have put it down, and then we have applied the Pythagorean theorem to find out what is the length of this side. Because if I have to find out sine or cos, I need to know all the sides. Then only I can find it out, right? So I'm just trying to find out the other side, which is not known yet, the perpendicular one. And once we know that, then we will be able to just plug in that value in the sine uh, cos formula. Okay. So we got y square equal to t x square by four. That means let's do a square root of everything. So what it becomes is. That means square root of y square is giving me a y. Square root of the whole thing. 
that x square root of 3 square root of the square square root of 4 so it becomes root 3 into x square square root of x becomes x and square root of 4 becomes 2 so it becomes root 3 by 2 into x is it clear so far Yes, sir. So we got y square equals to this. So we are just taking out the, we are trying to find out the value of y. So we are just taking a square root of the whole thing, both the sides. So this gives us y equals root 3 by 2x. Okay. So now, after all the circles that we have to do, we found out this is y equals root 3 by 2 into x. Yeah. So this side is x. This side is x by 2 and this side is root 3 by 2x. Root 3 by 2 into x. Yeah? Now, now we know all the three sides of this, this right angle triangle. If we have to find out the sine of 60 degree. Sine of 60 degree, this is sine 60, this is 60 degree. So sine of 60 degree will be equal to, equal to the side of it to this, which is root 3 by 2x. This divided by x. And I, I believe you guys know about this dance, right? So this this is I can write this x by one and I can this whole thing will flip. So that means sine 60 degree will be equal to root 3 by 2 into x and this whole thing flips. So one goes up, x comes down. This x and this this x will be cancelled out. That gives me sine of 60 degree equals to root 3 by 2. If now we try doing a recap of what we did. We had an equilateral triangle. We have drawn, we, 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 we did draw a perpendicular from the opposite vertex on the side opposite with this one. It split this whole side into two parts. So we have taken a small piece of that to pick up the right angle triangle where we knew this side is x, then this will be half of x. And then we did not know this side, so we just tried finding out this side with the help of Pythagorean theorem, which is a square plus b square equal to c square, meaning the square of the two adjacent sides, if that is making 90 degree, equal to square of the hypotenuse. And we put that value, which gave us the value of y, or this side equal to root 3 by 2 times of the original side. Now we know this side is root, if the one side of the equilateral triangle is x, then this is x by 2 and this is 3 by 2x. We just put that value in the formula for sine theta, cos theta and del theta and that will give us all the values. So sine of 60 degrees, now if you want to find out, which one is 60 degrees, this one. If I am talking about this one, what will I do? I will take the side of, side opposite of this one, divide by hypotenuse to find out the sine of 60 degrees. So sine of 60 degree gave us but sine of to this 3 by 2x divided by hypotenuse. 3 by 2x divided by x gives us root 3, root 3 by 2. Okay? So sine of 60 degree equals to root 3 by 2. I know it's a it's a loaded information. I'm talking non-stop, but just just for me to know. Are you guys clear with what I have done so far? Yes. If tomorrow somebody asks you to find out what is the value of sine 60 degree, would you be able to take it, take a part at it? Yeah? What happened? Yes, I'm, sir. I'm saying, would you be able to take a part at it? There were balloons flying. Okay, I don't know why. Alright, that is AI. So, here, I'm just trying to recreate the balloon. No, no, I don't know how to do it. Okay, fine. So, this one, I mean, as I said, you will end up remembering these numbers. But more than remembering the numbers, you should be very clear in your mind how those numbers are derived, how those values are derived. So that it doesn't look like a very, you know, hypothetical situation where you have no other choice but to memorize. Yeah? Clear? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like Babam is showing a thumbs up. I mean, if you are shy, 
of saying yes, unmuting yourself and saying yes, you can use the thumbs up. That that works. I just need to get the comfort that okay, all the kids here in the class are able to follow. Me, okay. Now, Rudvik, I hope I'm not making you sleep, right? Rudvik, I'm, I'm assuming I'm not making any of you sleep, including you, right? Okay, all right. Now, so we found out the value of sine 60 degree, which is root 3 by 2. So if I know the value of sine 60 degree, what is the corresponding equivalent in cos? In cos? That will be cos 60 minus 30. And that's why 90 minus 60. That will be cos 30 degree. So that gives me, whatever is my sine of 60 degree, that is equivalent to cos of 30 degree. Yeah? Sine theta is equal to cos of 90 degree minus theta. So sine 60 degree equal to cos 90 degree minus 60 degree. That gives me cos 30 degree. Are you guys with me so far? Everybody? By hook or by crook? You have, you have to be with me, okay? Now, now let's see how what we can do to fill the rest of the table, right? Now, sine and cos I know. What will be the value of 1030 degree then? 1030 degree will be equal to sine 30 degree divided by cos 30 degree. Yeah? So sine 30 degree is how much? 1 by 2 divided by root 3 by 2. Yeah? That means this is where the dance happens. Like I tell the younger ones. 2 by yeah? 1 by root 3. So 10 of 30 degree is 1 by root 3. Yeah? Now same way, cos of, sorry, 10 of 60 degree. Equal to sine 60 degree by cos 60 degree. Root 3 by 2 divided by 1 by 2. This is root 3. So 3 by 2 into 2 by 1. So I, I keep on telling everybody, okay, that even if you can mentally do it, you should still have that bad habit of doing it. Because sometimes when you are thinking a lot of, about a lot of things, you might miss on some, some calculation and make a mistake. If you are doing it step by step, at least you have an opportunity to go back and review. So even if I am I am supposed to know all these things, I am still doing it step by step because I have the bad habit of doing all this stuff. Okay. I does not take much time, I am just you know, taking 10 seconds extra. Yeah. So this gives me root 3. So we got root 3. Now, only thing that is remaining is this middle column. Let's find it out. Everybody is here so far, right? Everybody. The whole world is the same. Yeah? Bad joke. Yeah, okay. Alright. Here, let's say sine 45 degree. So sine 45 degree, let's recreate. What I'm doing here is, I have created a combo triangle, okay? When I say combo triangle, I created a right angle triangle, which has 90 degree. And the other two sides I picked up, in a way that they are both same. So it's a right angle triangle as well as the associate triangle. So this side and this side are same. Okay? If that is the case, can you just tell me how much will be each angle? It will be 45. That's the only way, if both the sides are same, that means the corresponding angles will be same. Okay? Then one, and one more thumb rule that you can that you can keep in mind at a concept level. Let's say if you have a triangle like this or let's say you have a triangle like this. What if, if you just look at this angle very carefully, very carefully, just stare at this guy, okay? You'll be able to see one thing, that bigger the angle Bigger is the opposite side. This side is biggest. 
बिकॉज दिस एंगल इज द बिगेस्ट अमंग द थ्री एंगल दिस साइड इज स्मॉलर देन दिस साइड सो दिस एंगल इज सी दिस साइड इज बिगर देन दिस साइड सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस एंगल इन दिस एंगल यू फाइंड दैट दिस एंगल इज बिगर आंसर ओके so what it means is if the if the angle is big the side opposite to that will be bigger between these two angles if you see this angle is bigger than this angle so the side opposite to this angle is bigger than the side opposite to this angle and here this smaller angle here that you see this angle is very small so that's why the corresponding side is also very small The side opposite to that is also very small. So, at a concept level, what we can think is, if I have a triangle where three angles are different, the three sides will be different, and the side that be biggest among the three will be opposite to the biggest of all the angles in the triangle, or the side or, or the angle smallest among all the three will lead to a side. Or will be opposite to the side which is the smallest among all the sides. So bigger angle, bigger opposite side. Smaller angle, smaller opposite side. That is the reason why when we looked at an equilateral triangle, what happened? We got confused because all the angles were same. So all the sides opposite to that had to be same. That is how it ended up being a equilateral triangle. Are you able to connect the dots? Are you able to relate what I'm saying? Yes, I can. Danushri, Isha, Thar, Ruthvik, everybody. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Oh. So, so this is there. There is no theorem that says so, but this is a correlation that we have drawn based on what we have seen. That if you have a triangle, the sides will be bigger or smaller will be a function of how big. Or small, the opposite uh, angle is. So any side will be big only, or the biggest of all. If the angle opposite to that is the biggest of all, okay, in a triangle. That part is clear. Now let's take the same theory here. So now, if you look at this isosceles triangle, what did I do? I made two sides equal. In this equilateral, in this right angle triangle, I said, okay, these two sides, which is making the 90 degree, are equal. And as soon as I did that, this again relates back to the concept that we were looking at. Meaning, if the sides are same, the angle opposite to them will be also same. Okay. And since the angles are same, so if this is x, then this is also x. And now we know that in this triangle, sum of all the angles is 180 degree. So 90 degree plus x plus x is 180 degree. So value of x, value of one angle is 90 degree divided by 2, which is 45 degree. Up to this much is okay, right? Up to here it's clear, right? Yes, sir. So in summary, what I have done is I have. Made a right angle triangle where the only thing that I considered was that the two sides that is making 90 degree are equal. Okay, so if the two sides are equal, then the angles will also be equal, and that value of each angle will be equal to 180 minus 90 divided by 2. Yeah, 180 is the sum of all the angles minus 90 divided by 2. That makes it 45 degrees. So so far I have not proved anything. Okay, I have just set the context here. This is like a you know, trailer of the movie. So now let's get into the movie. So repeating the movie again. So this is a right angle triangle. I am only. Difference about this triangle, right? I mean, only unique thing about this right angle triangle is this side is equal to this side, and hence this angle is equal to this side. 
Okay. Now we only know the side length of this side and this side. We don't know the length of this side. So let's find it out. So again, the Pythagoras theorem says a square plus b square equal to c square. So x square plus x square equal to c square. I don't. We don't know what is this. Let's call it c itself. So c square. That means 2x square equal to c square. Or I can say c square equal to 2x square. I'm just flipping it so that I can read it better. Yeah. So c square equal to 2x square. Up to this much clear, right? Everybody is clear. Everybody is with me. Yes, sir. Okay. So now that means value of c will be what? Basically, I'm saying square root of this equal to be equal to square root of two x square. Normal equation. So that means square root of c, c square root of c will be equal to square root of the whole thing. So square root of two multiplied by square root of x square with this thing x. So value of c is equal to Square root two into x. This part is clear. So I, we got the value of this side c equal to root two x. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody has to do the ritual of saying yes, unless you have a doubt. Yes, sir. Okay. Also the thumbs up. Any which way is fine. But but yeah, I'm just trying to ensure everybody is able to follow me, right? Everybody. Yeah. Okay. Now, so we got this in this right angle triangle, which is also isosceles triangle. We got this side as x, this side as x, and this side as root two x. So now, since we know all the three sides, it's easy for us to find out the value of sine theta. Let's say sine forty five degree. Let's pick up this angle. As 45 degree, or this angle, both are same. I'm picking up this one. Sine 45 degree will be equal to the side opposite to that divided by hypotenuse. So side opposite opposite to that is x by the hypotenuse. Yeah. What did we get? One by root two. This and this gets cancelled out. Yeah. So we got sine of 45 degree equal to one by root two. Everybody with me? Similarly, cos of 45 degree will be how much? Again, one by root two. So, if I am taking this angle, cos of this will be equal to base by hypotenuse. So, base is x divided by hypotenuse. One by root two. Then, of this will be how much? I am not doing any calculation. I will let you guys do mind math. One by root two divided by one by root two. Yeah. Yeah. So the table got filled, not because I flooded this table, because we saw how these values are coming. One observation, math is all about observation, right? One observation that we can make here is, see, sine of value is when the value of theta increases, sine value of sine increases goes all the way to one. In the case of cos between zero and ninety degree, when the value increases, the value no, the theta increases, the value over value of cos theta keeps on decreasing. In case of tan, it's again increasing. Yeah, and it hits infinity at ninety degree. This is just an observation. You don't have to mem memorize anything. You would just think, oh, okay, when sine is increasing, my value increases. Cos increasing, I mean the theta is increasing. Value of cos is decreasing between zero and ninety degree. Rest all you will have uh, the, the 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 table for knowing the you know, there will be people will say okay what is sine of thirty degree? There is a table for that, and you can get that in the calculator also, right? So I'm not going there, but here some of the most commonly used angles for which you can actually prove it. Any doubt, question, confusion, concern, worry? No. 
Alright. Atar, Isha, Dandashri. No? Real quick. Okay. Alright. So this point is clear, right? And and hereafter you will not now you can trust me, at least for this table. Because I did not just give you the table to memorize, I proved it also. Same way for you guys also, if you if you claim that you understood, I would assume that you will try doing the scratch work by yourself, just to recollect, recall what did we do in the class and how you can prove it by yourself. Because my knowledge is my knowledge, that might not help you guys. It will only help you when you make this knowledge as your knowledge and that will become only when you practice. Yeah? Alright. Can you move on? Shall we move on? Yes, sir. Okay. So what was the next topic that we had planned? What was the next topic that we had picked up for today? At least let's see if we can start. Alright. So, let's look at this one. Next one was Circle Theorem. Circle Theorem. Oops. You guys are getting locked out. My screen is getting logged every 5 minutes. Okay, circle theorem. So here we will talk about length of arc and area of a sector. There are two things that we will end up learning. Now, don't smile or laugh by looking at my drawing skills. This is believed to be a circle. Okay? And what do we remember? What is the area of a circle? What is the area of a circle? What is the formula for area of a circle? Loud it. Pi r square. Where i is the radius and pi is the constant. The value of pi is 22 by 7. Okay. Now, what is the perimeter? What is the formula for perimeter of a circle? Anybody on the screen? Two pi r. Louder. Two pi r. Two pi r. Two pi r. Yeah. Okay. So this is the formula that we have learned uh, some time ago. I'm sure you would have, you guys would have learned this even before I start teaching you. Right. Now. When we say, what is the length, now, other thing that we know is, what is the total angle that circle makes? 360 degrees. Meaning, from here to here, if I measure this whole angle, that will be 360 degrees. A complete circle is 360 degrees. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Now, if I, if I tell you, Let's say I am making a 30 degree angle here. Meaning, I am making a drawing other radius other than this radius where the angle between the two radius is 30 degree. If this portion will be called arc and this whole shaded area is called sector. Okay? If I ask you, tell me what is the area of this shaded or this sector which is making 30 degree angle or tell me the length of the arc can somebody take up an attempt at it can you tell me what will be the length of the arc and can somebody tell me what is the area of this sector the highlighted sector try it it's not difficult try it and then tell me where you are getting stuck and then only when I will try teaching it, okay? Because these two theorems are based on what we already know and how do you relate. 
there is nothing to teach here. It is all about practice. So I'll let you guys try. And if you get stuck, that is what will make make me happy, and then I'll teach you guys. So let's let's see if you guys are making me happy. I'll I'll give you guys a minute or two to try this. I'll just get a, a water bottle. Okay, any luck? Hey, Riyans. Riyans, you have joined. Probably five minutes early, okay? You have joined five minutes early. You can probably join after five minutes. Will that be okay? Same link. Right now I'm teaching the senior students, okay? So I'm teaching the tenth, eleventh graders, twelfth graders right now. Join after five minutes, then you'll be fine, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, I got one answer here in the classroom. We got the sector as in the area, area of this this highlighted part. How about uh, anybody on the screen? Uh, say that again. I'm guessing the answer. I don't know. Uh, You're guessing the answer. Okay, how much it is? I think it might be one by six. One by six of what? So it's the area of sector. Area of sector one by six. Okay, I will take that as a guess. And as I keep saying, I will do it myself. And when I will do it, I will show you guys also, right? Okay, so now let's let's practice this in the next class. Okay, we have just five more minutes. Let me give you guys some clue before we discuss. Okay, so look at this one. The only clue that we have here is this angle. This sector is making thirty degree angle. Okay, this is making thirty degree angle. And what is the total angle? Three sixty. So. If I am taking one degree angle, one degree will be one three sixty f, right? So the, I mean, whatever is the total angle, that takes the whole area. We are talking about certain part of it. What part of it? Thirty divided by three sixty. If I would have made a half, that would have been one eighty divided by one sixty three sixty. That is what would have been half, right? Here we are talking about thirty thirty degree out of three sixty. 30 out of 360, and multiply that by the total area. We know the area is this. Yeah. Similarly, if I ask you for the R, look at this R. This is just a child in the entire family. Entire family was how much? Two pi R. We are talking about this much portion only. The entire family would have been 360 degree. What we are talking about? Only 30 degree out of 360 degree. Yeah. So 30 out of 360 of the perimeter. We are talking about R. So we are talking about perimeter. Yeah. That will be your clue. And there's there's some more to practice. Yeah. Yeah, you can do pi s cos divided by twelve. But if if we try doing that, what happens is I am actually getting confused. Hello. 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 You are Yog, right? Okay. So just give me two minutes. I'm getting up this class. Yeah. Come inside. Come inside. Come closer to the fan so that you feel a little better. It's pretty hot today. All right. So. Here we are talking about. If I am talking about R, I am essentially talking about the 
portion of the entire perimeter. If I'm talking about the sector, I'm talking about certain portion of the entire area. That is how you'll have to look at it. Okay? All right. So that that would be our understanding for now. Let's conclude the class here. I would want you guys to think through it, and then tomorrow when we come in the class, we'll do some practice and we'll do some more theorem related to circle and see how that goes. Okay? All right. So with that, I'll give you guys rest of your evening. Enjoy, have fun, and we'll meet again tomorrow. Yeah.